Sa wakas at nagkakasundo na ang mga dilaw at DDS. Both sides agree, the president running for vice president in 2022 is just a ploy. Isang pakulo o strategy. To both sides, all of this sounds like a version of what already happened in 2016. Duterte repeatedly said he was not interested in the presidency, all the while traveling around the country. The October deadline passed, Duterte did not file his certificate of candidacy, everybody thought that was it. Then Duterte jumped into the race in November through a provision in the election law that allows a political party to substitute its candidate. He jumped in last, came in from behind, and won. It was a move unseen before, a masterful act of political seduction. Lumande, binitin, tapos biglang pinasok ang presidential election. Once again, people are trying to read into Duterte's moves. Not everybody is swallowing everything he says. Duterte has contradicted himself many times before and gotten away with it. My daughter is not running. I have told Inday not to run. Kinukumpirma ko po yan na nanggaling yan sa bibig ng presidente. To be more exact, ang sabi niya, kung tatakbo si Mayor Sara, Bong is out. Ako naman, dahil sa delikadeza, hindi po pwedeng dalawang Duterte ang tatakbo. So if Sara runs, then she will have to choose her own vice president. Yan po ang mga pinitawang salita kahapon ng ating presidente. Fans and foes of Duterte suspect the president is playing mind games with his opponents again. Ako naniniwala na the old man or the president right now will not really run in 2022. I think what is happening right now is the reverse of what he did in 2016. Iba ang galaw ni Pangulo eh. Kaya kuminsan, kung hindi ka eyes on the ball, kuminsan talagang magugulo ka. I do believe that PRD is tired already. He wants to rest. We talk to people who have closely watched this president either because they are solid supporters, or they get him, or because they have researched Duterte's past, like this author of a Duterte biography. Dati kasi yung playbook niya, yung parang pag-increase lang ng awareness, paglagay ng misteryo doon sa persona niya, kaya uh, gumaganyan-ganyan siya. So nasasabik yung mga voters. Pero sa ngayon, I don't think na kaya sil- nilang maglaro ng ganyan. Ibig sabihin, kumita na yan dati, hindi yan makakagat. Pareño chronicled the rise of Duterte in his book, Beyond Will and Power. His sources tell him the stalemate between father and daughter is not a ploy. Ang gusto ni Bigong na si Bongo ay maging vice ni Sara. Yan para kay Sara ay non-negotiable yan. Why? Personal yun eh. Very personal yung problem nila. May conflict yan ang dalawa. So hindi niya yan ma-accept. The president does not want to abandon his political allies or his trusted aide. Pero bakit nga ba non-negotiable si Bongo para kay Sara? Apparently, it all goes back to the very complicated relationship between father and daughter. Maski sila Sara ang kumonta kay Digong, hindi makakontak ng derechahan. Dadaan talaga kay Bongo. Walang direktang linya. Sa tingin ko, rinerisent yan ng mga anak. Sino bang may hawak ng mga cellphones? It's still Bongo. So paano sila makaka-direct call sa kanya? Okay, pumupunta si Digong sa bahay, nagbibisita. Pero bakit siya mag-iiwan ng sulat? Bakit hindi niya nalang tawagan at kausapin directly? Di ba? But it's not just Senator Bongo that Sara finds unacceptable. Sara was never parang a, fa- a fan of the part- political party system in the Philippines. Yung mga malalaki liability si PRD sa administration niya are from the PDP. And there was a time that when PDP was given the opportunity to, to be the ruling party, marami nag-abuso. Sara was never keen in joining the PDP. In fact, that's the reason why she created Hukpo ng Pagbabago. Sabi ni Sarah, susuportahan niya ang kanyang tatay. But in her own words, she will not share the light with PDP Laban. 
Also complicating the stalemate between father and daughter is Davao City politics. Sara has said only one of them should run for national office because the other needs to secure the Duterte stronghold in Davao City. A similar dilemma happened in 2015 when Duterte missed the October deadline to file his certificate of candidacy. Sara shaved her head and posted, Just do it! Dahil di mo na tumuloy ang tatay, di tuloy malaman ni Sara kung sino sa kanila ng tatay niya ang magme-mayor ng Davao City. Nabitin tuloy si Sara. That Sara had to send her message to her father through social media indicates that father and daughter are not exactly in constant communication, nor have they been strategizing together as some might assume. Duterte's two options to his daughter to endorse a Go Duterte ticket or to take in Bongo as running mate also had to be spelled out in a letter and not in a father-daughter talk. Rivera says Sara's brothers are also not ready to take charge in Davao City. PRD meron siyang salient issue with regard to who, who he wants to take over her. <laughs> so there was a time na wala na, si, wala na si Sara sa office, sa pagiging mayor, PRD was mayor, he would still look for Sara. Kasi nga, Paste is as just new ngayon lang siya pumasok sa polit- politika. And Pulong, I think there's parang may acceptance na si Pulong na may konting hesitation. Parayan says Duterte in trying to force Sara to take in Bongo is also trying to reassure political allies who are worried about their future if Sara wins the presidency. Kasi iba ang ugali ni Sara ikumpara mo sa tatay. Ang tatay very close sa kanila. Etong second generation kasi medyo aloof sa kanila eh. Maski mga sa mga barangay captains, sa panahon ni Digong, ang mga barangay captains, pag pumunta yung city hall, dere-derecho ng city hall yon May instruction si Digong dyan. Ngayon, pinaghihintay sila. Walang pwede pumasok. Rivera says Sarah simply has a different personality. Iba kasi yung bangis ni Sarah sa bangis ni Rodrigo eh. Kasi si PRD, alam mo yun, mabangis lang yun sa mga, alam mo na yung mga lalaki, yung mga ganon, yung mga talagang mabangis sa mga kriminal, mga ano, yung mga, mga pasaway, ganon. Sarah is different in a way na iba naman yung kanyang, um, yung kanyang veneer, yung kanyang result, iba. Si PRD, approachable, karamihan si Sarah, not so much approachable but very warm. Si PRD, pwede mo laro-laroin, ganon-ganon. Sarah, hindi. It's always business-like. Sara was the unika iya, the only daughter in Rodrigo and Elizabeth's brood of three. Like her father, she ended up in law school, but while Duterte likes to brag that he was pasang awa, Sara was an impressive student at La San Beda. She was a student council officer and also a sorority president. When her parents separated, father and daughter grew distant. Sara also strongly disapproved of her father's womanizing. Hindi lang konting tension. Talagang may tension yun na malakas ever since. Hindi lang yun dahil naghiwalay or nag, uh, legally separated ang nanay ni Sarah sa tatay niya, kundi matagal naging absent sa buhay nila ang tatay nila. Yes, totoo yun na si Sarah, is, pagkakaalam po, is very close kay Elizabeth. Pero nung growing up years ni Sarah, nung kabataan, very fun si Digong sa kanya. No? Mahal na mahal niya yon. Only kaiha. Alagang-alaga niya talaga si Sara. And Digong is very proud of that fact. Hindi nawala ang pagkabilib ni Duterte sa kanyang unika iya kahit medyo pasaway. When Sara first succeeded her father in Davao City, she removed all or almost all of her father's appointees and canceled some of her father's projects. Sara is also seen as the moving hand behind two changes of leadership in the House of Representatives. Each time, father simply let his daughter have her way. The failure of father and daughter to see eye to eye when it comes to PDP Laban and Duterte's cabinet is not merely an attempt to show an independent-minded Sara. The daughter simply does not like the company her father keeps. But others see tactics behind all the confusing signals from the Dutertes. Pag laging ganyan na may mga guessing game and all na laging sinesecond guess ang kanyang moves, eh, nahihirapan especially the opposition in trying to to make a sound strategic counter, di ba? Kaya sa akin, okay ako doon. I believe in that strategy. 
yung decision niyan tumakbo as vice president I think is very strategic because he held on to the ground for those planning to file a tandem that's one probably wanting to file as vice president and of course he needed time to to settle whatever that problem is between and among Bongo the family and the president Sa tingin ni Tikiya, pinupwestohan ni Duterte ang pagka-bisepresidente para makita ang galaw at reaksyon ng oposisyon. Talagang ginugulo, ginulo niya, uh, nagkagulo yung, yung supposedly magkakasama, tapos ngayon nailabas lahat ang baraha na walang single opposition candidate. Labas ang lahat ng baraha. Lumantad na si Isko Moreno, Manny Pacquiao at Ping Lacson. Lahat sila tatakbong presidente. Si Lenny na lang ang hindi pa malinaw. In this election season, the administration is the last to reveal its cards. Pareño says a Go Duterte ticket may actually happen even if Go, for now, has officially turned down the offer. Duterte diehards also do not seem sold on Bongo. Sa tingin ko, mag, ano yan, magiging hati na and magkakrumble, I believe, yung support for the Duterte presidency. If it is not Duterte, then I don't think magta-transfer yon. Kasi kung magiging candidate si Senator Bongo, may ibang papasok din na candidate. May probably si, si BBM or si Bongbong Marcos. And yung Duterte na sinasabi natin yung solid Duterte o yung DDS, I think yan, mahahati yan. Yung two, two or even three. But most observers think it will either be a Sara Bongbong or a Bongbong Sara. Pag geographical ang pinag-uusapan at lakas ng base, Uh, naandun sa Marcos Duterte. Sara is strong in the Visayas and Mindanao. Bongbong Marcos has Luzon and the Solid North. Even opposition strategists agree it's the best combination for the administration. Pero kung si Sara, may faction pa rin sa loob ng Duterte cabinet and uh, yung mga supporters nila na aayaw talaga. Sara is not a reluctant candidate. She wants to run, but on her own terms, and not her father's. Hindi siya pa bebe sa politika. In the 2019 midterm elections, she hit the campaign trail with a hugpong ng pagbabago, a regional party she formed that almost swept the senatorial elections. Matagal nang ready si Sara. Mas ready pa nga siguro kaysa sa mga kandidatong nagdeklara na. The mind games right now are being played between father and daughter. Ang daming panggulo na minsan bibigyan mo yun ng attention pero hindi naman pala yung nandun. Kaya nga ang sinasabi ko, uh, from the time ng 2016 to hanggang ngayon, makikita mo si President Duterte, iba't ibang levers uh, ng power ang pinupush niya, iba't ibang cards ang linalagay niya sa table. Babasahin mo ng seryoso, tatawanan ka at sasabihin sa'yo na masyado mo naman sinong seryoso, hindi naman yan ganyan. Makikita mo naman yung anak na, okay. Kasi alam mo, kung si PRD naman magaling sa actingan at magaling sa tusuhan, si Inday naman kasi, hindi siya yung ganon. If her plan is to run, alam na namin mga kaibigan yan. Alam na namin yan. Binalik na ni Sarah ang bola sa kanyang tatay. Call na ng presidente. Itutuloy ba niya ang pagtakbo bilang vice president? Will he risk 2022? Or will he let his daughter have her way once again? Ang unang reaction ng mga taga Davao, yung mga taga nagmamahal kay President Duterte, pero pahingayin nyo naman yung matanda. Pahingayin nyo naman. Pagod na yung mama. Alam ko na at the end of the day, it will still be like a Duterte pa rin yan. Whichever way it goes. Kung si Bongo Digong ang tatakbo, sa tingin ko parang token lang yan eh. Talo, matatalo sila talaga. Bongo is weak. Disaster. It yeah, will be a disaster. Be, yes. Uh-huh.